Hello. I'm going to do a little walkthrough of some of the comic art that's on my walls. I did this once before in a previous YouTube lifetime. Um, that video is long gone. So, um, one of the things I heard the last time I did it was that maybe I should have said some words about some of the things I had on the wall. So I will try to do that today and um, not break my neck falling down the stairs while I do it. So uh, wish me luck. Um, up top here is an Andy Cap by, uh, pardon my finger, by the uh, British cartoonist Reg Smythe. Um, Andy Cap's a, a favorite strip of mine. I love it. Uh, would not go over well today. It's definitely of its time. Uh, let's see what the easiest way to do this is. Up here I have a strip by Tim Lane. Um, I think these uh, bel Belligerent Piano was the weekly strip. And uh, probably used to appear in some weekly in St. Louis probably. I think that's where he's from. Um, Tim Lane's a great cartoonist though. Published by Fanagraphics nowadays. Um, really strong ink work. Um, up there is uh, a Rudy and Hollywood strip by um, William Overgaard. He did a strip called Steve Roper, which I think was actually more successful. Uh, Rudy and Hollywood's a very kind of odd ball strip about a monkey um, in Hollywood. <laughs> um, this one's kind of hard to check out. Um, that is a Hepcats strip by the cartoonist Martin Wagner. Um, who would go on to be a self-publisher in the 90s. Uh, anthropomorphic comic. Um, and that was a strip he did in college. Um, here's a page by Brian Talbot from The Tale of One Bad Rat. Um, highly recommend it. Um, it's a graphic novel from the early 90s. Here's a uh, Noah Van Skyver cover from his comic Boring. Um, I'm a big uh, Noah Van Skyver fan. I was very happy to get a hold of this. Ugh, okay. Um, this is a Jack Jackson page. Appeared in a Dark Horse anthology. Sorry for the glare. It's kind of a bright light in this room. Um, here's a an Amazon woman page by a cartoonist named Tom Simonton. Um, this is actually the letters page, so the speech balloons have um, letters and then Amazon woman's pithy responses. Um, that one in the middle there is the cover of Colonia Number no. 1 by Jeff Nicholson, um, a cartoonist I have always been a fan of. And over there is a cover of Scene of the Crime, number three, I think, by Michael Lark. Um, that's an Ed Brubaker comic. I think it was a Vertigo book, um, but I could be wrong. Might have been another imprint, but uh, anyway, it was a four-issue miniseries, uh, kind of a noir about a photographer. Um, enjoyable. Here is... A um, four-page strip by Sammy Harkham. Um, trying to remember where this first appeared. And I'm coming up blank. Um, but it is a called The New Yorker Story. Um, um, Sammy Harkham has a major new book out, so... Um, I highly recommend checking that out. Here's a page by James Stokoe from his comic Orc Stain, uh, his abandoned comic from Image, presumably because of um, sales, I would imagine. Working for licensed properties, I'm sure, is more lucrative. Uh, there's a Dog Boy cover by Steve Laffler, uh, another cartoonist that I've enjoyed for a long time. Um, I believe 
can't remember what issue of Dog Boy that was. Maybe num- issue four. Um, and I think he was being published by Fantagraphics at the time. But he might have been self-published. Um, down here. An odd little piece. Um, by Josh Simmons. This is from the Fantagraphics uh, We Told You So. Their oral history. About him meeting Gary Groth for the first time. This is... Ford Fanographics, um, a strip commemorating um, the passing of Kim Thompson, the founder, co-founder of Fanographics with Gary Groth, um, or co-owner, I guess, not technically a co-founder. Um, this appeared in Seattle's uh, The Stranger, which is the alternative weekly we have here in town, um, or used to. I don't. Uh, I think they're online, but they're they don't print anymore. Uh, This is by Peter Bagg, uh, who I should have said, who clearly knew Groth and Thompson very well. Um, I was very... I I read this in the issue of The Stranger when it appeared, and I was very happy to get this. Um, Here is um, a piece by Dave Berg. Um, He did... uh, I can't remember what the, the overarching name of his department was in mad i guess it was maybe dave burke looks at um and uh i grew up reading mad as a lot of people did um older and younger than me here is a strip uh wordless strip called henry this is by john liney um can't say i have a particular affection for the strip henry um, but I really liked this one a lot, and uh, thought the cartooning was very nice. This is the cover of a Jeff Nicholson book, uh, Through the Habit Trails, which uh, was serialized in the anthology Taboo, and has appeared in print um, a few times. Uh, most recently from a company called Dover, which um, no longer publishes comics, unfortunately. Uh, the reason it's such an odd shape is because it was a um, kind of a, a band that went across the book front and back, and then it had the titles. So, um, But this is the full art that appeared on the front and back cover. Um, this right here is a page from Stuck Rubber Baby by Howard Cruz. Um, this might be my favorite piece of art I own. Um, Howard Cruz is one of my favorite cartoonists, and I think Stuck Over Baby is a criminally neglected book. Um, and I just think it's a beautiful page, and it, it's very rare where I've been able to get the exact page from a book I would have wanted. Um, usually I just am not able to do that and this was one of those times where i was and i was able to buy it directly from him before he passed away um through the mail but uh but still the the money went into his pocket directly which was nice um this is a commission by a portuguese artist um i apologize if i'm pronouncing his name wrong i think he told me once i had gotten it right um zay bernay um all i asked were uh for two crows um and uh, these are, you know, I think technically ravens, not crows, but uh, um, just gorgeous piece of work. Um, he's a, a brilliant cartoonist or artist, though he is also a great cartoonist, too. Um, this is not a Jack Kirby, so pick your job off the floor. This is a uh, recreation by Bruce McCorkendale. Uh, you can find him on Twitter and Instagram, um, probably elsewhere. Um, he does... Um, he's kind of become known for doing these Muppet movie mashup pieces, um, but he also does spot-on recreations of um, great cartoonists. Um, and uh, this is what I asked for. I always loved this Kirby cover, and uh, so very happy to get a hold of it. Not quite the same as owning a real Kirby, of course, but it's a beautiful piece regardless. This is by a artist that um, I discovered on social media, Paul Harrison Davies uh, from England, and this is a commission. Um, he's done these 
pieces with little ghosts. Um, you can see the little ghost back here. And so I just asked him to do something with ghosts, since that seemed to be the sort of thing he enjoyed doing. He asked if he could do a, like a 50s sweet shop. And I said, sure, do whatever you want. And he killed it. And uh, very, very happy with this piece. Here's a little sketch of uh, my first cat done by my wife. Um, there you go. <laughs> I'll pass over all these books here. So this piece here, this tall piece, is a jam piece um, that was done at a house party, uh, Kim Thompson's house. Uh, Kim Thompson of Fanographics, and he had invited several cartoonists. And um, I'm trying to remember who all is involved here. Um, Jim Woodring, I believe, is doing the, the figure there. Steve Brodner, um, the editorial cartoonist, doing some... Uh, that's a uh, figure by Jason there. Um, I'm not sure who else was involved. Um, but anyway, I got this at the estate sale when Kim Thompson passed away. Um, nobody seemed to want it, and I was very happy to get it. And uh, um, I think it's a very cool piece. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, this is a, a rough for a book cover. Um, the, it's a novel by Tom DeHaven, and this is a rough by Kim Deitch, um, the legendary underground cartoonist. Um, his originals are magnificent and generally out of my price range, um, but very happy to have something by a cartoonist I think so highly of. This is a nice uh, little ink drawing by Jaime Hernandez. Um, he's produced God knows how many of these things in his lifetime, um, but they're all immaculate, and uh, I was happy to get it. Um, here's a one-page strip by Johnny Ryan. Uh, this appeared in an issue of Vice, I believe. And, uh, you know, Johnny Ryan's a guy you can take or leave him, depending on your, your sensibilities. Um, but uh, I thought this particular strip was hilarious, so... Um, happy to pick it up. Here is a cover by uh, Louis Trondheim from his comic The Nimrod. Um, was published by Fantagraphics back in the 90s, I believe, maybe the early 2000s. Um, not sure if that was the title in French, but um, um, lovely little cover, very thin lines. I like it quite a bit. Um, this is a Sandman Mystery Theater page by Guy Davis. Um, Guy Davis, I think, kind of became a lot more well-known later on doing the, the Hellboy adjacent material. Um, but this is where I um, became a fan of his work. So... Um, this is a page by the cartoonist Durf, um, best known for my friend Dahmer. Um, this is a page from, um, I believe it's called Punk Rock and Trailer Parks, which is a, um, a very good graphic novel by Durf that he did after my friend Dahmer, um, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, and I don't know if we'll see something like this from him again. He's kind of moved into... Um, a different mode of working. Um, let's see, up here is a just a one-page strip by Rick Geary. Um, not kind of his usual style. You know, he's known for the Victorian murder, that kind of thing. And um, this appeared in a special edition of the Comics Journal. Um, they put out big square-bound editions. Um, not sure how many of those they actually put out, but... Uh, um, yeah, this is where that appeared. That's why it's got the kind of odd shape to it. Uh, let's see what we have here. Um, this is a page by Dave Cooper from his book, Dan and Larry. Um, love Dave Cooper's work. Um, just a straightforward ink drawing by Stan Sakai. Um, 
Stan Sakai does not sell his story pages. Um, he does sell covers, and he does have other kinds of art that you can buy, um, usually for pretty hefty prices. So I feel very grateful I was able to get this a long time ago. Bought it from him directly at Emerald City in Seattle. Um, here's two pages. On the left here is a page from Reed Fleming, World's Toughest Milkman by David Boswell. Uh, fantastic Canadian cartoonist. Um, Reed Fleming's amazing. Everybody should check it out. Um, not sure if it's for everybody, but uh, I'm a huge fan. And then on the right here is a page by uh, Gilbert Hernandez. This is from my favorite um, book of Gilbert's, Human Diastrophism. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that run of comics are the best comics ever made. So I feel very lucky to have a page from that. Um, here we have a page by Gary Spencer Millage uh, from his comic uh, Strange Haven. Strange Haven got some notoriety a year or two ago. It got a video done by some guy on YouTube who's got a shit ton of followers and um, or subscribers, I guess they're called on YouTube. And uh, and he sold out of everything, so he's finally completed Strange Haven after you know. Um, way more than 20 years i feel like almost 30 years um but uh he has not released the final part yet curious to see what happens with that um here's a page by benjamin mara uh from omwat one man war on terror a fanographics book um yeah nice stuff um let's see what we got here here is a page um uh, from Hip Hop Family Tree by a fellow YouTuber, Ed Pisker. Um, I don't know if he sells these anymore, um, but I got it from someone who got it from him uh, years ago um, before Pisker was big enough to quit selling his art to uh, schlubs like me. Over here is a small page um, from Fonte Bukowski by Noah Van Skyver. Um, I believe it's from the first Fonte Bukowski book. Um, and uh, I love Van Skyver's work. Highly recommend it. Um, here is a illustration by Jim Woodring of his uh, Frank character. Yeah, just straightforward. Um, Woodring does sell his art and you can buy story pages but getting something like this is a lot more affordable than getting a, a, a story page down here is a poster um, or the the original art for a poster done by simon hanselman this was for an italian comics festival uh fumetto in 2020 um he had quite a few things for sale and some really striking pieces but this was the only thing that had all four characters, all four of his main characters on it. And I really wanted that, so that's what I went with. Up here is a page by Evan Dorkin um, from his comic Dork. Um, he became pretty well known for um, the Eltingville Club, you know, a bunch of nerds. This was a story he did in a flip issue. One side had the Eltingville Club, and the other side was this, uh, I think it's called the Northwest Comic Collective, uh, something like that. And it's basically about a bunch of people who are, you know, into art comics, fanographics, yada yada, him mocking them mercilessly. Um, and I loved it. I was very happy to get it. It's filled to the brim, as all Evan Dorkin pages tend to be. Um, let's see, down here is Richard Sala. Um, this is just an illustration. I don't think it um, appeared as part of anything. Um, and uh, love Richard Sala's work. And I thought this was a nice piece. Down here is a, a cartoon by Carl Stevens. Um, a wonderful cartoonist. He um, has his work published in the New in the New Yorker here and there. This is a rejected cartoon. It didn't get 
didn't get in there, but uh, I greatly enjoyed it. Um, so I picked that up. So pardon the motion. I'm going to go and try to get the other wall that I couldn't reach before. So right here. Um, on the left side, that is a rough for the cover of Dogs and Water by Anders Nilsson. Um, a really brilliant cartoonist. Um, that was published, I believe, by Drawn and Quarterly. On the right is uh, the cover for an issue of Zero Zero. Uh, the cover is by Sam Henderson, who was known back in the 90s and the early 2000s for his comic Magic Whistle, um, which are kind of silly, um, but, uh, but definitely have their charm. You can tell it has kind of this weird compressed, you know, these wrinkles because it's got um, overlays in there, there's multiple layers. So um, those kind of things pre present certain presentation problems. Um, but uh, I decided to lay them all in there. Um, right here, two more pages. The one on the left hand side here is um, an Aquaman page uh, from a mini series in the early 90s and the art is by Kurt Swan and the inking is by um, Al Vey who uh, would be George Perez his inker for um, a long time I think he did all the Avengers work later on um, but uh, I read that mini series off the spinner rack as a kid and and uh, uh, think very highly of it. Um, on the right hand side here is a Cerebus page. Um, this is from one of the later issues. Um, 276 looks like. Um, and uh, all done by Dave Sim and Gerhard. It's a beautiful page. Um, and uh, despite all of the qualifiers you always have to offer when you talk about uh, Cerebus, I, I recommend checking it out. Uh, let's see up here. Okay, here's a couple pieces. The first is on the left side. That is the art for the corner box um, of the Marvel comic Nth Man. Um, the art's by Ron Wagner. The comic was written by Larry Hama and drawn by Ron Wagner. And so if you recall the old corner boxes at Marvel that had characters in them, this was the, the art done for that uh, with the main character there. Um, and then half of it would be in the background as a Soviet flag and a, and a U.S. flag. So um, on the right side is a stencil piece by Peter Cooper. Not sure where or if this ever appeared anywhere, um, but I love Peter Cooper's work. And um, I was happy to get a hold of it. All the way up top here. Um, sorry, it gets kind of hard to see some of this stuff. On the right hand side is a portrait of Alan Moore done by Peter Bagg. That appeared in a book, um, I think Tomorrow's published, which is sort of a tribute to Alan Moore. Right there in the middle there is a cover. Founding Fathers Funnies by Peter Bagg once again. Uh, that was the collection of strips published by Dark Horse. Uh, my favorite Peter Bagg stuff, actually. Um, all the way up top there, kind of hard to see. I'll try to. This is a, a strip by Ted Rawl, who was a fairly prominent weekly cartoonist once upon a time. Um, always kind of a controversial figure. Um, but uh, always at his best when going after the Bush family. And this is a strip going after George W. Bush. Uh, let's see what we got here. Right there in the middle is a page from the Maze Agency by um, Adam Hughes. Early Adam Hughes work. Um, I could never afford later era Adam Hughes. Um, but I loved the Maze Agency. Um, I think it was forgetting who published it. I want to say Kamiko, but that could be a mistake. Um, and then it ran through a couple other publishers. Uh, written by Mike W. Barr, drawn by um, Adam Hughes in the early going. 
um, before he was uh, off to Marvel in DC. Here is a weirdo letters page. Um, hand lettered by, uh, I assume by Peter Bagg, who was the uh, editor of this issue and um, features a, uh, a letter from Gary Groth, uh, which uh, makes it pretty cool. So, um, obviously most letter pages were not handwritten uh, from Marvel and DC, so it's, uh, it's a nice treat to be able to get to have something like this. Up top here is a Blondie strip. Um, not by the original Chick Young. This is probably, I think the guy's name is Jim Raymond. Um, and this is from... I'm forgetting. It's been a while. Um, I think the late 50s, maybe the early 60s. Anyway, I really like the strip. It has cats in it, you know. Um, can't beat that. So, um, and I've always liked Blondie, despite it not being considered a very serious strip by anybody. Um, next level here. Pardon my finger again. Um, on the left is a page by David Laffam from his Stray Bullets series. A later um, issue of Stray Bullets. Um, and on the right is a uh, page from Richard Sala from his uh, masterpiece, The Chuckling What's It. Um, my favorite Richard Sala book. Um, down here, right here in the middle there, is a Betty and Veronica page by Dan DiCarlo. I think this is from 62. It's from the early 60s. Um, DiCarlo's work gets a lot softer and a lot more rushed the later the era um and really by the by the later part of the 60s he is you know clearly drawing to uh to survive <laughs> but in this um in this piece here you can still see that really crisp ink and uh he's kind of still working in his good girl style um though a bit toned down since he's working with uh um young girls here with Betty and Veronica, but I think it's a really pretty page. Over here, this little guy is just a, um, a Native American portrait um, by Serpieri, uh, one of my favorite cartoonists, uh, the Italian cartoonist, known for, um, well, for doing westerns and more importantly for doing smut. Um, and uh, this little guy here is probably the only thing I'll ever be able to afford by him. So I'm happy to have at least something on the wall. Um, and then a few things here on the edge. So down here is just a little piece by Joe Matt um, from his, you know, his comic Peep Show. Not sure what this was done for, who it was done for. But uh, you don't see his art around very much. And he hasn't produced much in his time. So... I'm happy to have anything. Next up is a little uh, bit of sketch by Mark Hansen. Um, he produced these for something. I'm not sure. They are. He did a certain amount. Um, so you see them around. Um, but I've never seen a Ralph Snart page for sale. Um, I contacted him once and he said, he just basically said no original art. <laughs> that was his only response to my email. Um, so I have no idea if uh, if you can even get more stuff from him or not. So take what I can get. This is a piece by Barry Blair, the very controversial Canadian cartoonist, uh, the guy behind Air Cell. Um, this is a pretty early piece by him. And as you can see, he's got his name there in the middle of the glowing orb. Um, weird elf shit going on, which kind of sums up Barry Blair. Um, here's a page by Josh Cotter from his comic uh, Skyscrapers of the Midwest. Brilliant, brilliant work. Um, he is, you can see, just hatching the shit out of these pages. They look amazing. Um, and he's a wonderful cartoonist. Um, buy his books, please. And at the top here, a small piece by Tilly Walden. He's gone on to great success recently. 
Um, I guess not recently. She's been successful for a while, but she has a Walking Dead book out. She has a book she's doing with Tegan and Sarah. So, you know, she's a big fucking deal. Um, and uh, I was very grateful to get this little piece um, because <clears throat> now her stuff goes for quite a bit more. Pardon me. I'm going to shift over here. This is a uh, bit of life drawing by Guy Caldwell, um, a cartoonist and a fine artist that I uh, think very, very highly of. Um, yeah, this is from 1992, just a, a bit of life drawing from a life drawing class. Um, down here is a poster, a Cerebus poster. Um, I have very few posters or prints or reproductions on the wall, um, mostly just originals. Um, it's a weird kind of snobbery that people who collect art get into, um, which is pretty silly, um, but I'm guilty of it too. And um, But I loved this poster so much, and I was so happy to get a hold of it. Um, this is um, by Mary Fleener. Um, wonderful sort of a post-underground alternative car cartoonist. Um, known for her cubismo style, that's what she calls it. And this is just a single illustration. I think the illustration's called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. It's from 1993. Um, brilliant color. Uh, very happy to have this. Sorry, as I turn around some more. And then over here, um, this is a page of roughs by Seth. Um, Seth is a cartoonist I'm very fond of. And this is from uh, a page from Clyde Fans, uh, colored in with blue pencil, so it gives it a little bit more depth. Um, but uh, I was very happy to get a hold of this. Um, big fan of his work. So, okay. Well, I might do a couple more of these with a couple other rooms that I have some stuff, but uh, that's definitely the bulk of my of my collection. Um, any thoughts, comments, criticisms, observations? Let me know. Thanks.